Okay, so we're continuing talking about symmetric matrices. Uh, really, the best matrices there are, and by far my favorite. And they have lots of special properties. And I think you will learn a good chunk of those very special properties today. And what makes these matrices uh, everybody's favorites. So here's where I would like to start. At the end of last lecture, we considered B transpose B which was, of course, symmetric. And the question was, is it positive definite? B transpose B. And the answer was, well, if the columns of B are linearly independent, then yes, it is positive definite. And if they're not linearly independent, then it's positive semi-definite. That was the conclusion. So right now, I will repeat the logic, but for a slightly more complicated combination, B transpose MB, where you're told that M is a symmetric positive definite matrix. So we just put something inside of B transpose B. At the end of last lecture, it was the identity matrix, but now it's some other symmetric positive definite matrix. And the question is, is this combination, number one, symmetric, necessarily? And if it is, is it necessarily positive definite? Or when is it positive definite? So let's answer that question. And I will do it for you because it will illustrate the technique of matrix algebra. You can look, you can argue what's going on here by an example with specific numbers. But it's just much more powerful to do it in the language of matrix multiplication. So let's do it together. What would it mean for matrix A to be symmetric? Well, if it's transpose equals A. So let's see what its transpose is. I will write down A transpose, and then I will evaluate the transpose of this product. And you know how the transpose works, transpose of a product. It's the product of the individual transposes in the reverse order. So that's what I'll do, and then we'll take a look at what we have. Here we go which I'm now going to write the individual transposes in the reverse order. Which, of course, simplifies. We have B transpose. B transpose and B. Hey, we recovered A. So yes, A is symmetric. Okay, that dots that I. What about is it positive definite? Well, how do you test whether something is positive or definite? Well, this whole discussion is about testing whether or not a matrix is positive or definite. We'll discover two more criteria today. But this is basically appealing to the definition. We will, we will consider the combination X transpose AX. And once we plug in what A is, we'll just be able to appeal straight to the definition to ascertain a criterion for A itself. So here we go. And just like last time, I will call this Y. This will be Y transpose by the same token. It's the product of the individual transposes in the reverse order. So that's Y transpose. And I'm left with... And the question is, question is, is this always greater than zero? And on the one hand, it appears so, because I also told you that M is a positive definite matrix. So as long as Y is non-zero, this is guaranteed to be positive. As long as Y is not zero, it's not the zero vector. But can it be the zero vector? Yes, it can, for the same reason as last time. If the columns of B are linearly dependent, and y is a, excuse me, and x is a vector from the null space of b, then y will end up being zero. And under all other circumstances, in other words, when the columns of b are not linearly dependent, are, in other words, are linearly independent, y will never be zero for a non-zero x, and therefore this expression will always be positive. So, to account for the possibility that B has a non-trivial null space, we have to put greater than or equal to zero with the additional remark 
That is, if the columns of B are linearly independent, then it's always a strict inequality, and the matrix A is strictly positive definite. If the columns of B are linearly dependent, then it's positive semi-definite. So keep this in mind, because this observation will be key for the implications of the two properties of symmetric matrices that we're about to discuss.